Hey Greg, so I think you know Julian Araujo is going on currently right now with the situation. Do you have any updates on potential transfer to Barcelona? Uh, the only update I have is that it's in FIFA's hands to review the the process that was underway or that was completed or what, whatever they however they determine that, uh, and they'll give their ruling once they've gone through that process. So we're kind of all in a, in a wait and see. Um, do you know when interest first started? Uh, when you guys got really serious about you know the prospect of transferring Julian, yeah, you know, you know this is uh, I think it's the second window that um, you know we've had some interaction with them about Julian, and so uh, pretty late in the window did did the discussion about what a deal would actually look like start to get really like clear and, and negotiating. So it was over the last you know three to four days where those discussions really started to to pick up and, and get momentum and um, yeah and then things started to happen fast hence the reason why it went down to the wire right so um, yeah but it's clearly that he's someone that they've had on their radar because in previous windows they've they poked around and asked about him and different things have occurred so. yeah and you know it's been talked about that's you know kind of been maybe a league issue why the paper didn't get on time you know um, like, do, does the league have to approve the outgoing? It's not our league. It's on their side. It was, oh. They have to input the, all the stuff on, on their side and to get the final process done, to get the final approval. So uh, they had everything from us, and it just went down, and there was a computer issue in the process of trying to, to do it. So I think it ended up like 18 seconds late. Uh, so I, I actually went through this once uh, at, in Toronto when we had a player whose, whose process ended just on the other side of the window, but there was legitimate computer issue which they were able to identify and they recognized that and the whole process still went through so um, we have optimism for sure for Jules and and uh, for the whole thing to get done but we don't know until an actual review has been done. Do you have a timetable for the review or is it all on FIFA's? My understanding is it's, it's officially with them now and that, that wasn't the case yesterday. I imagine they have more than one of these that they're looking through uh, and so um, my understanding as of this morning that they're officially on it now, so within 24 hours I think we'll have an indication. And it might be less than that, just within 24 hours. And where's Julian at mind, mindset? These last couple days. Yeah, I think, I mean, the best is to ask Julian, but I think he's he's in, he went through the initial, like, excitement slash life hits you in the face kind of moment when it all was going through. And then you get to a point where you realize you're in this sort of, uh, limbo i guess and i think he's in a point that obviously i imagine he hopes that it happens it's a it's a dream come true for a young player to be able to go to a club like that as well but he also understands things are not in his control at this point and so um if it doesn't and he's here he's ready to keep moving forward and uh doing his work and and if it does then he's excited and ready to go was he like training by himself today yeah the last couple of days he's been around the group but we haven't put him into any of the uh, the formal work that we've been doing it's you know again for these things to finalize obviously medicals all those things have to take place and so we don't want to mess around with any of that for his sake and for for the sake of the deal so he's he's keeping himself moving but it's just been a little bit on the outside and how do you deal with that and also sort of getting the group you know focus on a preseason game um more fans will actually be in the stadium and your thoughts on how this group has progressed over the last couple of weeks yeah, I mean, as, as it relates to Julian and the group, I think everybody realizes they move forward. I think a lot of guys are happy for, for Julian, and they see it, obviously, as a as a player. It's these opportunities to go to clubs like this don't happen overnight and, and don't happen often. And so uh, I think everybody realizes it's a great opportunity for him, and everyone else keeps moving forward. Uh, and so, you know, we, we played some 11 v 11 yesterday. We obviously trained a little bit more moderate today and tomorrow we'll start preparing ourselves for Saturday and we keep our process moving. Uh, as far as us, I think our guys are looking forward to getting into just some games, uh, you know, more consistent games. We have our game on Saturday, then we go to Coachella for three games in a week. I think a little change of site of venue will be nice just to get away for a little while as a group. Uh, and, and things I think in terms of players coming in will start to start to take place here over the next few days to weeks we'll start to be adding in some of the positions that, that maybe we lost over the offseason so some of that progression will happen as well but the group continues to move forward and I know they're looking forward to seven weeks is a long preseason so now we're starting to get to where we're looking at three weeks and a lot of games in front of us that's that's exciting for the guys because they're starting to, to feel that the energy of the season coming up. Greg speaking of Saturday what are you hoping to see from the team this weekend? 
Yeah, I think just progress fitness wise, first and foremost. I think the things that, that teams and players need to continue to work through in preseason is how quickly you transition from one phase to the next phase, right? As you're getting your legs under you and you're getting your minds in that concentration mode for 90 minutes, you gotta get from one play to the next, you know? And uh, keeping our tempo up, our, our relationships on the field in terms of working together for the things that we want to accomplish. Uh, staying connected as a group, all these things. The guys will get sharper as things go, things will come off a little cleaner as we continue to go, but it's just laying down that consistent play-to-play, action-to-action work that, that you want to get under your legs and you want to get that, that also that concentration and focus uh, under your belt, and that's what I feel like. Preseason is about getting a lot of that underway, and then the season, as you get going, obviously the team will get better and things will start to, to gel more as guys continue to get used to each other. But it's a group that, by and large, everybody's pretty comfortable with each other. Um, as we add pieces in, then we'll have to integrate, but right now, the guys are pretty comfortable. I wanted to ask you about Jalen. What did you think of his performance with the national team and can we expect to see him out on the pitch this weekend? Yeah, I thought Jalen was excellent. I thought, uh, you know, I thought he showed confidence, maturity for a young guy. I, I felt like if I, I was at both games in the stadium and I felt like he was the leader of the line in terms of moving the line, keeping people connected, squeezing space. I felt like the tension in his body from action to action was excellent. Uh, his his on the ball play was spectacular in my opinion. His ability to manipulate uh, the team when they're trying to press, to always have solutions, to find the right entry pass, to never really get himself into tough situations I thought was really good. Uh, you know, just a couple moments that he knows where, where I think he can be a little more physical or, or be a little bit more assertive into a challenge just to continue to develop that that side of things for him as he matures but I felt like the confidence and all the things that were there to show he's he's ready for uh, you know a higher level professional uh, experience which he's going to get with us so and he, he will be playing uh, at times this year for sure nobody's going to play all the time but he's going to surely integrate into our group of center backs we felt like it was that time which is why we don't have as many the same center backs that we had last year we feel like Jalen is also a guy who needs to take a step forward so on the topic of center backs, um, you know, we just talked to Chris Mavinga earlier. Um, do you have a set pair of center backs, or will the preseason kind of dictate that, like a week before the first regular season game? Yeah, we'll see. It's you know, for preseason is about seeing where guys are at, who fits together. Uh, we obviously know what Martin and Sega can do together. We know how Eric fits into the group. Jalen, uh, seeing you know which guys match up with Jalen. I think all of them have the capacity to play together. Chris gives us a natural left-footed player, which can balance off anyone because he's. Uh, a little different in that way. So I think they will they will all be fine together. I think sometimes it's just repetition uh, and getting used to each other. And so we're trying to get some more of that in preseason now that we have everybody back. Unfortunately, we had, you know, Jalen was away for a little while and so he didn't get as many repetitions. Sega was getting his green card, so he was away for a week, so he missed a couple of games. But um, so it's just integration of these guys. I don't, I don't pick a pairing with, with four weeks to go before the season starts and, and then once they get their opportunity, they got to stay in form and, and keep their keep their position on the field. So I think we've got some depth and some options and, and some guys who have some qualities and some obviously Jalen, a young guy who I think has a huge upside. So we're going to invest our energy in all of them. If Julian does leave, how does that affect what you're trying to bring in? Um, we assume you're trying to uh, find replacements on the wing. Will you have to look to, uh, on the back line as well? Yeah, I mean, we, we definitely will have to replace Julian because I mean, at, at the moment, the only other right back we have is Kelvin. We can, in my opinion, I mean, you can put Martin down there, out there for a little here, a little there, but I just don't think that's the position that he is most suited to at this point in his career. So I think we could spot fill, but for us, we certainly would, I believe, need to go into the market and, and replace him. This is not a surprise that Julian's going. It's clearly something that we've been anticipating for some time now. And so uh, in terms of options and guys that we've been looking at, we, we have targets, we have guys that conversations have already been started with. So, um, but we can't really move anywhere until we get clarity on, on the situation with, Ju with Julian as well. So either way, we will have to move forward, but I think it's a position for sure. If he leaves, we've got we've to fill that. Greg, because every season is different. You, and this is not your first rodeo. What, what maybe is something that's changed coming into is seven weeks of preseason that maybe you, you didn't do with last year's group or with one of your groups in Toronto. Is there kind of a couple of things that you point to, like, hey, I want to do this differently this year in this preseason because I think it will result in this? Yeah, I mean, it's good. I, I think our process is generally pretty similar. 
I think having the extra week and the fact that guys came in straight away off of a holiday is changes some things because when you start January 22nd or 23rd, you tend to get 8, 10, 12, 14 guys who are coming in prior to that, doing some work on their own, getting themselves fit. Instead, you're getting guys straight off of New Year's Day, you know, New Year's Eve. So for us, it's been a little bit slower build into our process, trying to utilize the extra week or so. I also think it's a it's a mental grind to be seven weeks in preseason. So, you know, we've tried to, to slowly integrate, focus on certain things early on. And now as we turn towards more of a the matches side of things, it's really honing in on sort of our principal style of play, all the things that we want that are gonna come out in the game, our relationships. Obviously, we're going through a little bit of some roster rebuild in a few areas, so we haven't had a ton of wingers in camp, so it's been it's been working on some other areas as well. So it, every preseason, like you said, is different, every season's different, and the variables are different. That's the biggest thing, which is true of this group as well. So uh, process similar, maybe a little slower roll in just to try to get guys' legs under them and all that coming off of. Yeah, he answers a question about center backs and how yeah. you, know, you weren't exactly pleased with how that, that position worked out last year. Is there maybe one or two other areas in your 11 on the field that you can identify for us that you're like, this is a focus for us right now? Yeah, I, again, I think losing Sam, Kevin, Winger is a position for us that we need to uh, to bolster some some wide attack. I said last year, I say again, I'd like to get more production, you know, in terms of goals and assists off our wings to support our two forwards who have had good goal scoring form the last couple of years. So, but you got to get goals from other places. So some of that's in midfield, but some of that certainly, and we I think we got that from Ricky joining and Gaston had a few, and so I think we have some contribution there. I think we need to continue to grow on the contribution from those those wide positions. Uh, so some of that is guys taking another step forward. Some of it is is us bringing in some guys who we feel can help us on on that side of things. Um, yeah. Then I think it's it's uh, solidifying and reinforcing some positions. I mean, we have the potential of 50 games this year now with all the competitions and everything that's going on. And we we would like to think that we we're in it to try to win all of them. Uh, but you can only do that if you have some depth and you have uh, some guys who can give each other a spell because it's just a lot of games that are going on. So. All right. What's the status of Gino for the... Yeah, so Gino is backfield running. I think he'll be back into some version of training tomorrow. I don't know that he'll be ready to, to get in the match this weekend, but I think he'll be ready to go as we move to Coachella. So. Uh, unfortunate setback for him. He had a kind of a fifth metatarsal. Uh, wasn't a obviously wasn't a break or anything like that. But he had just a year ago had surgery on that and had a screw put in. And I think there was an irritation right at the point that we just had to get him through. But everything looks solid and good. And so now he's just moving forward. Any other updates, injury updates? None on the one you're going to ask me because <laughs> uh, you always ask me. Uh, injury wise, nah. I mean, knock on wood, everybody is is progressing. Um, I'm trying to think, Johnny is still probably a couple weeks away. It's uh, for him. It's just continuing to build um, the things he needs and get get himself back to return to play and playing. So hopefully, hopefully it's sooner rather than later. I was looking forward to this preseason with him and and the four team. Just trying to get him out. And the other one, close? Not close? I have zero new information for you. <laughs> you're the first call I'm making when I get it because <laughs> I know you, you're asking. <laughs>